Okay, so I gotta get the rest of this done because my phone doesn't have a lot of storage, but uh, so I'll go through it relatively quickly. Um, we find that We find that part of the focus is on unity and purity uh, through forgiveness. And uh, I'll just reference back to what we talked about before, about Paul's leadership not being by dominion uh, or by power or forcibly. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22 and 24. Moreover, I call God as witness against my soul, that to spare you I came no more to Corinth. Not that we have dominion over your faith, but our fellow workers for your joy. For by faith you stand. Just a reminder of that. And I'll jump through again, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I'll just read the uh, verses 10 and 11. Now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We know that unforgiveness is one of the ways that that God brings great disunity and brokenness, both for ourselves and for some other people. Um, so uh, we need to remember that forgiveness um, heals. Imagine in that church there was so much brokenness. Um, in in First Corinthians, we find so much so much hurt, so much damage, and uh, the reminder is the reminder is that we ought to. Um, yeah, the, the reminder is that in the story that comes between First and Second Corinthians is one of a new church that's founded, who where the people are seemingly were walking away from God in their actions and deeds, and, and yet they are uh, by Second Corinthians they're following God again, and the reminder is that forgiveness heals and uh, allows for unity even when things are broken. And we also find uh, there's themes of, of how God helps us and takes care of us. He's faithful. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. And so we're just reminded that um, whether it's things we need to do or things we need to face, temptation and otherwise, that God provides as much as we need. There's no weight that, we, that God gives us to carry that, without, with, that with Him we can't carry. And there's themes of redemption and transformation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Um, how God, he left heaven, that we may be redeemed and transformed. Uh, themes of marriage and union, uh, both for joining someone in marriage and also in, uh, in some kind of a, a situation where we're representing Christ. We need to, in every business, every job, everything that we are, and so when we have responsibility, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? And I guess the, the biggest general application uh, of, of the Corinthians, uh, it comes through in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 19, that we must be renewed by Christ. So let me read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 19. I know this is pretty fast at the end, but that's how much storage I got on my phone. I'll have to fix that out. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, that is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. We are to forgive. We are to love. We are to allow the healing power of Christ into our relationships and into our lives. Um, First and Second Corinthians are the story of a new church, uh, a church that, that Paul went and helped to plant, uh, introduce people to Christ, uh, and and then he writes them a letter which they misunderstand about about they think they're supposed to stay away from everybody in the world, but really they're just supposed to be clearly united with those who are in Christ, following God in righteousness. And so then he writes First Corinthians to say, "Hey, you didn't quite understand what I was saying." And, and yet, at the same time, you're, you're, you're sinning and you can't be doing that as Christians. You need to live and allow God to strengthen you and bring you past that. And then uh, we find some time passes and Paul writes again. And the church has changed. People have allowed God's Holy Spirit to work in their lives. And um, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, good reminder to us to follow Christ in all things. Gotta go to the mall now. Thanks, guys.